Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is such a delight to have you watch this video. I am Uwem Akban. On today's video, I want to speak on God will give you the desires of your heart. How many of us want God to really give us the desires of our heart? So many, I'm one of them. <laughs> if you would say, okay, let's make a census. People that want God to give them the desires of their heart should raise their hand or give a certain sign. I know there are a lot of people and you may be one of those people. So I would like you to listen to today's topic. And this is not something like, you know, it's not a clickbait that if you listen to this, God will give you the desires of your heart. But I just want to go through a scripture passage that speaks on that. And one thing I believe is if God said it, he can do it and he will do it. But most times we misconstrue God's word because of the things we've heard, the interpretations and revelations that have come up of those words and then we believe them wrongly. All I'm trying to do in this video is to go to a certain passage that speaks about God giving us the desires of our heart. And then I want to do a little exposition on it and help myself and you watching this video. Because before you would have clicked this video to watch, it means you have desires, requests, petitions. You would wish God as a child of God to make it come true for you. You have desires that you would say, Lord, I really need these desires. Lord, I really need you to do this that and return for me and God can do it and he will let's dive into it so when we talk about God giving you the desires of your heart first thing I want to consider is what are the desires of your heart so some could be God I want to marry God I need a job God these are my personal requests I need a child God I need this I need that some of those things may just be ambitions and things you would wish to get when the Bible says God will give you the desires of your heart what does it really mean Let's read the scripture, Psalm 37 verse 4. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. You know, most times we come to the, the second clause, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. And forget about the first clause. But for the second clause to have a foundation, which is for God to give you the desires of your heart, you have to understand the first clause, delight yourself in the Lord. What does it mean to delight oneself in the Lord? It could be interpreted like enjoy yourself in the Lord, enjoy, come to the presence of the Lord, come to church and God will give you the desires of your heart, serve in choir and God will give you the desires of your heart, come and sweep the church, keep the house of God clean, God will give you the desires of your heart, do this and do that and God will give you the desires of your heart. Religiously, it could be said to be a number of things, but here I'm just saying, let's check this scripture. What does it mean for one to be delighted to delight oneself in the lord is it the religious duties and routines of serving in church is it really that then if it's that there are a lot of people that have done that and then they have not still gotten the desires of your heart there are a lot of people that have soaked himself in just to get that and they have not gotten the desires of your heart so now what does it mean to delight oneself in the lord the word delight in the scriptures as used in this passage is not the conventional word delight in terms of rejoice in the Lord, enjoy yourself in the Lord, you know, have pleasure. It, it's not really that. The word used here is a word that means to be soft. It's interpreted to be soft, to be pliable. What does pliable mean? I checked my dictionary and I found three meanings that I love so much. The first one says susceptible to being led or directed. Second one says capable of being shaped, bent and drawn out. Third one says, able to adjust readily to different conditions. I love all of it because it talks about you being led by God. The Bible says, they that are led by the Spirit of God are called who? The sons of God. So when the Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord, it says, be susceptible in the Lord to be led by Him, to be directed by Him. Be susceptible and be capable of the Lord changing your heart, of the Lord shaping you. That's what the Lord really wants to do in your life, to shape you, to shape your heart, to mend your heart, to make you become more like Him. That's the essence of the fellowship we have with our Lord. That's the essence of the fellowship of following Jesus. It is for us to become more like Him, not for us to get our ambitions met, but for us to become more like him. And let me point this out. By the time we become more like him, we are in a place of advantage that we can have all the things that we need. And even our wants, he can give it to us because at that point, 
He can trust us. Our hearts could be trusted to handle his blessings. Our hearts could be trusted to handle the goodness that he shows to us. God is good to everyone. God gives to everyone. But when it comes to you as his child, God really wants the best for you. A father, a good father wants the best for the child. And that is why such a father will always look out for the best possible ways and opportunities to give to bring forth good to the child. The Bible talks about the fatherly role in Matthew and said, if your earthly father, our fathers on earth being evil, which is why sometimes the parents example that some of us have had have not been the best example and we can't portray that to God. The Bible says, if them being evil could give good gifts, if a child acts of brain, the father does not give a stone, the child acts of fish, the father does not bring a snake, what do you think about your heavenly father? That you need something and he will say, I don't want to give it to you. No, he is good and he can give you more than enough. So to delight yourself in the Lord is to be soft in the Lord, to be pliable in his hands, to allow him to shape your heart, allow him to lead you, to allow him to direct your path. You know, the scripture talks about trusting God in Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. Trust in the Lord with what? All your heart. Lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. I'm emphasizing that all. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will do what? Direct your path. So delighting yourself in the Lord is that place of trust in God. That place of placing your life and everything about you in the hands of God. God, you can shape me. God, you can shape. God, you can bend me to your will. Wow. Hallelujah. Because sometimes we have a tendency of wanting to go off of God's will. When we try to look at the world and around us and look at what other people are doing, it, sometimes we could be influenced by these things could influence us and wants to capture our hearts. And then we'd say, God, I want to have the house, I want to have the wife, I want to have the kid. And after all these things, what else? Which is why the, the scripture goes on to say, seek ye first. First, first does not mean in rank number one, but of priority two. So seek ye, like above all, above all things that you would want to seek, prioritize this one thing more. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, all this provision that you need. So God will give you the desires of your heart. When it comes to God will give you the desires of your heart, the other aspect of it I saw was when I read this scripture at first, when I did not really know, I thought to myself that if I delight myself in the Lord, which I did not even know what delighting myself in the Lord meant in the first place. So I just thought to myself, if I delight myself in the Lord, God is going to give me, you know, I want to do music. I want to do this. I want to do that. God is going to give me the money. God is going to bring this. God is going to bring that. God is going to put, fix everything in place. And I've lived life for a bit. And I've realized that sometimes I don't get those things. Even when I pray about it. Doesn't mean that God is not good. No, he's so, so good. It is just that I didn't even walk to understand what he meant. I didn't, I didn't really delight myself in him. I didn't really submit my heart to him to share. I didn't really give him myself to bend to his will. I wanted to stick to my rules, my behaviors, my character, my pride, my ego. I wanted to live my own way, but for him to bless me in that. And God is like, no. I said, delight yourself in me. Which means if I'm pliable to him, one thing will happen. He will set the desires of my heart right. So God will give my heart what it should desire. Like the Bible says, I will lead you in the way you should go. God will set desires in my heart what I should desire. God will give me the desires of my heart. And, and when I talk about God giving me the desires of my heart, this is what it means. God will assign to my heart what to desire. Mm -hmm. I don't even get that. God will deliver up to my heart what it should desire. God will direct my heart to what it should desire. Yeah, I have ambitions. I have potentials. I have things I want to do in life. But first and foremost, for me to even get to living in the fullness of all that God has for me and then having this hidden request done, first God has to set my heart right. So he has to give me the desires of my heart. I wish I could make you understand what I'm trying to explain right now. How God will give me desires. It's not first and foremost God just coming because you delighted yourself in him 
and they will come and just start fulfilling the desires that are already in your heart. No, it transforms your desires. The Bible says, as we behold him, we are transformed from glory to glory into the same image as him, which means the more you delight yourself in him, the more he shapes you, the more you delight yourself in him, the more he changes you, the more you delight yourself in him, the more things in your life start straightening out into God's way and God's will and mark you. Once that is done, the desires in your heart will be so different from just mere ambitions that it will turn to purpose. And that's what God wants to give you, purpose. Purpose for life, purpose for living. <laughs> Hallelujah. I hope you're blessed in this little exposition of this. Once God gives you the desires of your heart, I want you to go back. Let's go back to Psalm 37 verse 5, the next verse after that very verse. The, the, the verse 4 said, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. I hope I've explained that in the little way I can. You can share more ideas in the comment section. So verse 5 said, Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He will bring it to pass. At this point, your heart has already been transformed, and your desires have been shaped to be in alignment with God, to become in alignment with God's purpose. And at this point, it says, Commit your way. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. Commit your way unto the Lord, and trust in Him, and He will do what He will bring these desires to pass. You will fulfill these desires. You will fulfill these hard, hard desires. You will fulfill this request. You will fulfill these petitions. Because at this point, your desires has come to a place of experiencing purifying. It's been washed. It's cleansed. Let me end with this. In the New Testament, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, the Bible says, For it is God that does what? That works in us to will. God works the desires in us. That's so beautiful. God works in us the desires. God works in us to will and to do, which is God works in the desires and then He works in us the power to bring forth these desires. God works in us the desires to honor Him in our daily lives and works in us the power to bring it out. Let me read it in the Passion's translation. God will continually revitalize you, implanting within you the passion to do what places Him. That is His heart. God will give you the desires of your heart, which is as simple as God will shape the desires in your heart. He will give you what to desire. And after giving you what to desire, He will give you the power to work it out, to bring it to pass. And every desire as a child of God that He lays in your heart is holy. Every desire God brings to your heart, all are holy desires. And they are to honor God. Holy desires. Purposeful desires. I hope this video has been a blessing to you. Please subscribe to this channel, share this video, give it a thumbs up. I will appreciate your support by subscribing and liking this video. Thank you for watching once more. See you in the next video. God bless you. Bye.